Right, welcome ladies and gents. It would seem that Microsoft just hates the female body, randomly. I know, weird title, uh, weird opener, but it is true. It is absolutely true. So, as you can see here, Microsoft publishes new inclusion guide for video game developers. Recommends against creating female characters with exaggerated body proportions. I.e. feminine. You know, hips, hip, hip, a good hip to waist ratio. Nice pair of tits. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's don't make something feminine. That's why all, all Western games currently, all of the women in them look awful. They're like, it looks like a plank of wood. Like, it's weird. Women don't look like that. Women do have feminine features. It's like this, it's almost, it's such a bizarre turn of events. You know, you have the sort of infiltration in the gaming industry, and then in an effort to appease women, they insult women. It's like, you all look like shit. Like, there you go. Bizarre. Really bizarre. And it's not exactly like it's turning out very well for them, because Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer has admitted that the recent Activision Blizzard layoffs were partially undertaken due to falling industry profits. But don't worry, guys. They're here to save the day. Because their uh, their guidelines are, you know, unequivocally gonna absolutely win, you know, lo loads of money. I guess. How bizarre! So let's take a look. In doing their part to push the entire medium ever towards a final form as a pile of boring, uninspired mush. Very true. Microsoft has released a new product inclusion guide for video game developers, which, in addition to a number of other such recommendations aimed at appeasing the terminally online of woke idiots, notably suggest that the creators completely abstain from depicting any sexualized or unrealistic female characters within their works. What does that mean? What does an unrealistic character, unrealistic female character look like? What's that supposed to be like? Lara Croft? Like, I, I don't understand. Because if I walk around outside, admittedly the UK is full of fat people at the moment, massively obese, really, really disgusting actually, quite frankly. And I know people will get offended by that, but it's not healthy and I don't care. And, you know, when I'm walking around outside or playing a game, I'd rather look at attractive people. So I'm going to say it's disgusting. Uh, but what, what is realistic? What is unrealistic? You know, again, granted, you go to some places, like, people are banging. You go to others, you're like, ooh gross. Surely it'd be somewhere in the middle now. Or we're just getting planks of wood. Weird. So, made public on March 20th as part of the company's appearance at the recent 2024 Game Developers Conference. Microsoft new gaming for every product inclusion framework. I mean, even the title sounds lame. God. Calls on developers to actively consider four specific areas when creating new title. Those being, as per the framework's official website, approachability, Okay, so this is this is this is their advice to making a new IP. It needs to be approachable. It needs to ensure all players existing and new, experienced and novice, feel safe and welcome. We're off to a good start. Representation is about being about reflecting the diversity of the player and create a community. Right, so there should be like not that many then, surely. So like not that many women anyway. Uh, so everyone can feel that they belong. Cool. Globalization. Love that. Love more globalization. Yeah, that's just what we all need. It's about making global players feel at home and ensuring that their experience has local relevance and respect. Right. So why is certain, like, Japan, you know, Japanese and Korean games doing really well at the moment? They're not catering to Western audiences, are they? I mean, they are, but not as per the mainstream press thoughts, anyway. And then we have this, accessibility is about making games and experiences playable for people with disabilities and striving to make products accessible by design from the ground up. I don't necessarily mind that one. Like, I think if you're disabled, you want to play a game. I think you should be able to. I don't I don't really see the issue with that. I think that's fine. Um, and in services, in service of promoting these values, Microsoft also released a product inclusion action guide for developers to follow in order to keep their titles sufficiently progressive and unoffensive. Having your story told is a universal human need. No, it's not. But for many in marginalized communities or in markets outside of the US, it's rare to be represented in media. 
let alone games. And as a result, some people could feel like a secondary consumer for our content. They are. You should have a, t a target demographic and other people that want to play it are not their target demographic. They should feel secondary. That's not out of bigotry, but you should have a target demo when creating a game. You can't universally appeal to everyone. It's just not how business works. Unless you're, you know, a hamburger. But then you're not going to appeal to everyone then anyway. So these people are dumb shits. Um... 80% of media consumed by the world is created in the US and yet most media including video games don't contain characters and content that align to that broad consumer. Cool. So anyway, here's what they say that you need questions to consider when it came to the project. Uh, are you telling new stories or sharing new perspectives within the product experience? Do all your characters, player depictions look the same? What steps have you taken to ensure characters are represented respectfully and authentically? How have you validated assumptions you have made about your audience to check for blind spots or unintended stereotypes? Would you feel proud to show a member of a community how their culture character is depicted within your experience? These are so shit. This is brain dead. This is such brain rot. How are the wide range of customers depicted within your products, content, portfolio, and communications? What process have you used to validate how different groups or people or cultures are represented in your experience? What percentage of screen time is held by different gender racial identities. You can't have a racial identity. It's not like identi identifies black. Word up, bruh. <coughs> anyway, uh, do you have a process to review key decisions with a lens of helping customers feel seen? Are you reinforcing any negative gender stereotypes? What, like women are hot? I mean, they're not anymore. Most of them are fat and gross, but still. Um, look, if you get offended by these comments, it's not my fault. Go to the gym, all right? And if you're a woman, put some makeup on. In expanding on this last question, Microsoft represented three additional sub-questions for developers. Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? What does that mean? Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? They can't be. You can't physically be the same, but okay, never mind. Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armour that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? What, like a nice rank? When the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability? That's what we all want to play. We want to play blokes that um, just cry. Fuck this, honestly. Uh, well, there you go. I mean, this is there's a little bit more here, but it's not it's not really going very well, is it? Yep, people have been fired. There you go. Can't have uh, tig biddies. In Microsoft games anymore. Huzzah! Microsoft's come in. They're saving the day. They're solving sexism. With sexism. Cheers, guys. Thoughts down below. Bye now.